Hey everyone, welcome back and thank you so much for being here. Today should be fun because I've got this really cool old Fender guitar here. This is a 1956 Fender Esquire and it sounds incredible. If you want to hear it, I did a full length video review on my YouTube channel last week. You can check it out. But today I actually want to open this guitar up and take a look inside, try to authenticate all of the components and hopefully narrow down exactly when this guitar was made because in the 1950s the Fender workers would handwrite the date inside of the bodies and the necks uh, but they would also write other things like their initials or their name uh, so you never know what surprises you might find in these old guitars and we can also take a look at the pot date codes and some of the details on the electronics as well but I should say I don't just go around taking apart old Fender guitars. Uh, this one is actually a player grade guitar and it has been taken apart many times before I'm sure so uh, we'll get into that later on in the video but I'm going to set up a little workbench here and uh, we'll take a look inside this old Fender and see what surprises we may find. Alright let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and cut these strings off. They're pretty much dead anyways. Let's go ahead and remove the neck first on this guitar. Take a look at the neck date. There were a couple of Fender workers that would sign the necks during the early to mid 50s, most famously Tadeo Gomez, TG. Here's the original neck plate with serial number 10,771. On the back of the neck here, we have the uh, router pinhole, which is a clear sign this is a vintage neck uh, and you've got uh, a little bit of checking going on in the original finish if it'll show up here on video and your four mounting holes with the kind of circular indentions around the outside it's again something to do with the machines they used or how these holes were drilled and then we have uh, a number two circled no idea what that means i don't know that anyone does but uh, i've seen it on a number of guitars around this period uh, a little bit of flame on the neck there and then I'll have to show you guys uh, the neck date so let's take a look at the butt of the neck here and we will find the original neck date which is January 2nd of 1956 uh, right after the new year but typically you do not see the date written down to the day it might just be January 56 so that's a little unusual and kind of cool that this was you know, this is about as early 56 as it gets. Uh, unfortunately, there's no signature here, so we do not know if this is a TG or XA neck, potentially, which might add some value, but really it doesn't matter. Um, this is a really nice original finished neck, and you can see that this is all legit. Uh, original tuners and the Esquire logo, which is so cool. You don't often see these Esquires. So let's take a look at uh, what's underneath the pickguard here. I've got something to show you guys there. Okay, so this is the original pickguard. It does have some play wear to it. You can kind of tell it does have a uh, shiny back, which is accurate for this time period. All right, now you can see underneath the pickguard here, and I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys. So even though this is a Fender Esquire, a single pickup guitar, all of the guitars were routed for neck pickups, as you see here. And in fact, this guitar has had a neck pickup in it at some point, as you can see the mounting holes here in the, uh, the route. Uh, it's not really a huge deal. It's really non-invasive mod if you were to do so. Uh, it's something that I've thought about with this guitar, and now that that's already been done, it's guilt-free. But also, um, I bought this guitar with the understanding that there was a repaired humbucker route in the neck position here and that's why I was able to pick up something like this because when you get into you know routed repaired modified and finished work guitars you you know get a heavy discount for that 
Uh, however, looking at this right now, it's nearly impossible to see the repair or to find where the work was done. Uh, I don't know. I may have to go in here and really look and, and try to find it, but whoever did this, it's an incredible job. Uh, it looks it looks legit. You've got your router, circular router marks in here. Um, and then we've got the neck pocket uh, with original finish still intact. And there's something written here in the neck pocket. I do not know what it is. Maybe we can take a closer look and see. So I can't really tell what that says to be exact, um, but the original finish is intact and this is just something written uh, in pencil there. A lot of times you will see ESQ for Esquire or they will write Esquire or Blonde or something like that underneath the pit guard area, but I'm not sure what that says, uh, but it's all original and uh, it's nice to have. Uh, let's take a look here at the control cavity, see what's going on. So these knobs are 56 or earlier with the round tops like this. Original switch. And on the back side here, we've got our three-way switch, original pots, and then we've got this crazy Esquire capacitor set up. Uh, but let's take a look at these pots and see if we can find the date code. All right, so the dates on both matching pots are 1376, which designates 1956, and then 07, which is the seventh week of 56. So that puts it in February of 56, which corresponds to the neck date as well. Um, so that's good to have. And inside of here, you'll see the original finish again in the cavity, and which is really untouched. Um, and that's always a good sign as well. So now we'll move on to this bridge pickup. We'll get a reading on it, see what it's reading at. There should be a body date. Uh, and we'll see what other surprises may be in there. These are really tight quarters in here, the way they built these guitars. So this is the original Fender patent pending bridge, as you will see there. And uh, this pickup is uh, early 56, but still it um, is late enough that it has the uh, staggered pole pieces there in the middle. Um, I wish it was a flat pole pickup. I think that ended in 55 but still a great sounding pickup. All right, so someone added a ground wire, as you see here, and we have a body date, which is nice with the original finish. So January looks like, to me, January of 56 on the body. Uh, and that's best case scenario with these old guitars, you know, January body, January neck, uh, February pots, everything here is, is really lining up. Now, on the back of this pickup, I don't think I have ever seen this before on a Fender guitar, but uh, sometimes there will be a piece of tape on these pickups and they'll be dated or whatever. This one has handwritten Esquire on the back. I have never ever seen that before on an Esquire and it really begs the question, why, why is that? Because um, these pickups are supposed to be exactly the same as what was in a Telecaster. So why would they designate this pickup for an Esquire? I have no idea. Uh, definitely raises some questions and I have never seen it before. Um, maybe my, you know, vintage expert friends out there can, uh, reach out or chime in in the comment section, but you can see the, uh, original wire, original solder. This pickup has never been taken apart or messed with. So uh, it's, it's all legit and original to see that written on the back. Yeah, really, really cool. This is what I love finding in these old guitars. So let me get my multimeter here and we'll get a reading on this pickup. Six point oh. So it's not a super high reading. You know, I guess some of these pickups can be six to seven K range, but this one reads six K and honestly it's one of the greatest sounding Esquire pickups I have ever come across. So there you have it. That's inside of a nineteen fifty six Fender Esquire and uh Definitely, definitely some surprises in there. Um, glad to see all the dates uh, that correspond with each other. 
and original finish in there. And then the bonus on top, this Esquire note right here. Never seen it before. Yeah, if you guys have ever seen that, let me know, because that's, that's a really cool little detail, uh, simple detail that, you know, I enjoy finding in these old guitars. Alright guys, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today, and uh, if you want to support me and what I do here on YouTube, the best thing you can do is just like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, and that really helps me continue doing what I love every day, which is uh, playing these old guitars and trying to tell their stories through these YouTube videos, and hopefully making some music as well along the way. But uh, again, thank you guys so much for all your support over the years, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.